Hello and welcome to a Troll Master tutorial. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Carbon X. The Carbon X system is specifically designed to protect customers and workers near commercial indoor growing areas that use supplemental CO2 from being exposed to dangerous levels of CO2 and to satisfy all local and state regulations. Many customers want to know if they need a Carbon X or if they can just use their Hydro X or X Pro controller to act as a CO2 alarm. The short answer is no. Regulations require that any CO2 safety system must have its own CO2 sensors and be a standalone controller in order to provide redundant CO2 sensing and protection in enclosed spaces. The CarbonX provides critical monitoring of CO2 levels in up to 13 separate zones. The CarbonX system offers high level CO2 alarms and low level CO2 alarms, and both levels can be customized by the user to satisfy local requirements. A single CarbonX controller can be connected to up to 13 separate rooms that need to be monitored. And each room will either have one or two independent CO2 sensors installed to constantly measure the CO2 levels in that room. If any of the sensors detect unsafe levels of CO2, the system can shut down CO2 flow, vent the area, turn on visual and audible alarms, and even send a signal to a fire alarm panel and make an emergency call to the fire department. The CarbonX can control CO2 solenoids, ventilation fans, and dampers. The system is modular in design and fully customizable. It consists of the CDA1 controller, CO2 sensors, various plug-in type DS modules, and multiple colors and types of audio-visual alarm stations. Up to 40 device modules or alarm stations can be connected to a single CarbonX controller. Each of the device modules or alarm stations can be linked to an individual CO2 sensor for individual room control or linked to all sensors to create a master alarm function. We provide flexible options on how to configure the CarbonX system to best suit the individual needs of each customer. There are five ports at the bottom of the controller, including power, ethernet, alarm one, alarm two, and a device port. You can set each alarm following the requirements of your local fire department. An example being having the alarm one port for lower readings up to 5,000 ppm and the alarm two port for high readings of 5,001 to up to 30,000 ppm. The settings are completely dependent on your local regulations. Our plug and play design simplifies the installation process. To complete the system and have it work properly, the sensors and device stations have to be connected to the CarbonX system by using standard RJ12 cables and RJ12 splitters. The modules are daisy chained together using the RJ12 cables, allowing for flexible installation and future expansion. Once the sensors and devices are connected to the system, you'll find all the current readings from the sensors on the LCD main screen. Click left to access the device list page. Click right to access the alarm message page. There are other settings within the system setting page that allow the user to determine the CO2 alarm level. Preset levels for the low alarm is 5000 ppm. After you're done changing the settings, press enter to save the settings. And high level is 30,000 ppm. Press enter to save the settings. Additionally, there are other selections within the system settings page that also need to be set, including the system time. Within system settings, you will also find the options to update firmware, factory reset, and calibrate your CO2 sensors. The CarbonX can also be controlled by using the free smartphone app, TM+. It offers remote monitoring, settings, and receives push alert notifications, so you'll be notified immediately when high-level CO2 levels are detected. This gives you complete control of your grow room anytime, anywhere. To learn more about how to add a controller to your app, you can check out our QR code tutorial. The MBS K30 CO2 sensor is compulsory for the system to work and works exclusively with the CarbonX system. You'll need one MBS K30 sensor for each room or two sensors if your local fire department is asking for a low level and a high level alarm. For example, you could have one alarm at 5,000 ppm and the other at 30,000 ppm. The MBS K30 incorporates an NDIR 0 to 30,000 ppm sensor in a self-aspirated enclosure and can read up to 30,000 ppm CO2. 
Each zone or room can have one or two K30s depending on your local code requirement. And they require the SPH1 for supplemental power to function. You can have up to 13 MBS K30s for each CDA1 controller. If the Carbon X is monitoring CO2 in all 13 possible rooms and you're using both low and high level alarms, you would have a total of 26 MBS K30 CO2 sensors connected to the Carbon X controller using multiple SPH1 hubs to connect and power the sensors. The AS1, 2, 3 and 4 alarm stations are audio-visual alarm modules. When a sensor detects high CO2 levels, it is these alarm stations that will alert occupants to evacuate the area. The AS1 is the simplest version of the alarm station offered with the Carbon X. It has a strobing red light and a siren to alert occupants. And the AS1 requires 120 volt power to operate. The AS2, 3 and 4 are different variations of the same alarm device. They are all audio-visual alarm stations. The difference is in the color of the LED indicator lights. And the AS2, 3 and 4 all have an LCD screen that will display the current CO2 ppm level of the MBS K30 sensor linked to the alarm station. The AS2 has three color-coded LED bars that will illuminate as the CO2 level changes and you can set a two-level warning alert on these alarm stations. Trollmaster also offers an amber-colored alarm station called the AS3 and a blue-colored alarm station called the AS4. The amber and blue modules are required for a small percentage of localities in North America. Consult with your local fire department to determine which alarm stations they prefer and where the alarm stations need to be positioned. Some are required inside or outside the room, and in some cases, you will need them both inside and outside the room at the same time. Using the DSE-1 emergency shutoff module is a simple way to instantly shut off the CO2 supply when a high level of CO2 is detected. Most regulations will require incorporating an electrical shutoff within your system to instantly shut off the flow of CO2 gas when a CO2 level of over 5,000 ppm is detected by your CO2 sensors. The DSE-1 is a 120 volt emergency stop station. It is designed to easily stack on top of your current CO2 controller's device modules, such as the DSC-1. It will then act as a redundant CO2 control device to shut off CO2 if there is a CO2 controller failure. It can be used with your CO2 tank or generator and will remain on permanently until an alarm is triggered, after which it will activate an emergency stop and signal power off to anything hooked up with it which could be a CO2 outlet, a regulator, a generator, or any third-party CO2 controller. This allows it to automatically cut off the CO2 supply and injection into the room. The DSD-1 is a dry contact output module that provides both normally open and normally closed connections. When connected to the normally closed contacts, the DSD-1 can be used to shut off a CO2 device that's wired in series with it. Alternatively, when connected to the normally open connections on the DSD-1, it can be used to activate a device such as an exhaust fan or connect to the building's fire alarm panel. The DSC-1 is a 120 volt controlled outlet. Usually you connect it to devices like ventilation fans and it'll automatically turn on the fans when it's triggered by a CO2 alarm. Installation of the Carbon X starts with deciding where to locate the Carbon X controller. Mounted in a location that is easy to access and away from high levels of humidity and water. From the Carbon X, you will be running at least two separate RJ12 cables. One cable will connect up to 13 of the low level CO2 sensors to the Carbon X, and a second cable will connect up to 40 of the device modules or alarm stations to the Carbon X. 
you must use one or more SPH1 hubs in order to connect the sensors to the sensor port and the device and alarm stations to the device port on the Carbon X. Multiple SPH1s can be used together by using RJ12 cables and daisy chaining from one SPH1 to the next. Remember, do not mix sensors and device modules on the same SPH1. Then, you can add alarm 1 with the lower CO2 level alert by pressing the address button. Then repeat the same steps with alarm 2 for a higher CO2 level alert. Then go ahead and press the enter button to go to the alarm setting page. Then press enter again to set the set point for alarm 1 and the set point for alarm 2. You can then adjust the set point freely to fit your requirements. For example, you can have alarm 1 as 5000 ppm and alarm 2 as 30,000 ppm. To add a DSE to the CDA1 controller, first press the address button. Then find your device on the device list page and set them to alarm 1 or 2 that you've set previously. Don't forget to add a check mark to confirm the alarm setting so that whenever the CO2 level in the room reaches the limit of the lower alarm, it'll cut off all equipment connected to it. Steps to add the DSD dry contact outlet, the DSV low volt outlet, and the DSC CO2 outlet are similar to how you do it for the DSE. Now that all the sensors and device stations are connected properly, when a high CO2 level is detected and it exceeds the preset standard level, the CarbonX system will automatically take four measurements at the same time. The alarm stations that are assigned to the CO2 sensor that detects high CO2 level will immediately begin to alert personnel to evacuate the area. The DSE1 CO2 emergency stop station or the DSV1 low volt station will automatically shut off the main solenoid valve of the CO2 tank immediately. And the DSC1 CO2 device station will turn on the ventilation fan to remove the CO2. The DSD1 dry contact station will also connect the emergency fire alarm system to the local fire department simultaneously. When the audible alarm is activated, you can turn it off by pressing the enter button. However, the DSE won't turn back on until you press the enter button on the controller and the CO2 level drops below the lower CO2 set point.